Now what we're going to do now is look at Samaritan, which is one of the combat vehicle reconnaissance series. We're going to do the whole family of them. There's quite a lot, but we're only going to do them in pairs. Save driving you mad. Please remember to like, subscribe, or click the little notification bell if you don't want to miss out on these videos. And I'd just like to say thank you to all our patrons for making this possible. Please join them if you can. This is quite an interesting vehicle in many ways. It's the only vehicle in the museum with red crosses on it, meaning that it's specifically an ambulance rather than anything else. And that means from a, an armoured point of view, it's slightly odd, slightly different, and we'll try and uh, encompass that, but the chassis, the basic chassis, is the same as the Scorpion. The only difference, of course, is that in the modern ones, all these vehicles have had their Jaguar engines replaced by Cummins diesels. It's a much more compact engine than you'd think. The Cummins, it's a straight six, plonk down in here and it fits in pretty easily where the dear old uh, Jag used to be. And that's the only real difference. The only other thing which may show from the outside, but it, it's only a small thing, is part of the air intake here, which has been altered to suit the new engine. But really it's the same vehicle on the same chassis as the, um, the Scorpion and all the rest of them. And that means it's got the, um, the driver who sits over there underneath a, a lid which pops up when he, want, he feels safe. And he's got um, three pedals, one of which is the gear change. It's got quite an odd arrangement. Well, it's not really odd, but it's very much like the gear change you find in Chieftain. You change gear with your foot. You've got a choice of seven speeds, which is, means the gears are very close together. And that's what they call the hot shift arrangement. And um, the seven gears work in both directions. You can go forwards and backwards at roughly the same speed. It means that the vehicle's got um, all the drive arrangements to the front here, and ending in the um, drive sprocket down there, which is again unusual on a British vehicle at this time. It's got armor, aluminium armor, the same as all the others, but this one, Samaritan and Sultan, which is the armoured command version, have the higher body. This is about 12 inches higher than the old body or the body on the rest of the vehicles to give it more headroom inside, to make it a bit more sort of manageable from a human point of view. They expect us all to be six foot tall, but that's what makes the vehicle so different than the rest of the vehicles in the CVR series. But it's still got high mobility, a good speed, and it will still climb some pretty steep slopes. There's a limit to what it'll do on stopping and starting on slopes, but that's how it works. Now inside, for a start, the vehicle normally has a crew of two. That's the driver and the commander who's up there in the cupola and who sort of doubles, if you like, as a senior medical officer to attend to the wounded. But you can have a third crew member who's only normally taken on board if they're on a long range operation. And the third crew member is merely a medical orderly whose job it is to look after the wounded in the back. But uh, of course, when he's there, he has to sit somewhere. And that usually means at the expense of one of the sitting patients. Now the vehicle has room inside in the back for four stretchers, one above the other on each side. Now they have a maximum of four st stretcher cases normally. If they are taken in a mixed bag, then they'll take up two on stretchers and three walking wounded sit sitting facing them, I mean, or any combination. But that's how the vehicle's arranged. Now, being an ambulance, it is not permitted for the vehicle to have an offensive armament. So it has no machine gun mounting on the top. The nearest thing to armament that it carries, and it is allowed to carry them, are these smoke dischargers, which are done to put down a smoke screen so that the vehicle can get away if it does come under fire. 
but they aren't really regarded as an offensive weapon. They're a means of defense as much as anything else. The exhaust from the engine, as you can see, goes up the front there and along the top. The very top is normally a stowage box. In all kinds of junk can go in there. It's mainly to take in um, camouflage covers, which the vehicle needs when it's not operational. But that is really how the Samaritan operates. Now, the other one, it's very similar to, in fact, it's so similar that without the red crosses painted on it, you couldn't tell them apart. And that's a vehicle called Sultan, which was designed as an armoured command vehicle. Now, it has a crew, a normal crew, of about six people. There's the driver, of course, and the commander up there, and often sitting next to him, another radio operator, and the other three are people sitting in the back working a rolling map um, display or acting as staff officers. Now, the, um, the Sultan, one way you can tell it from this one is that it has a detachable penthouse actually rigged over the back. Normally it's folded up in such a way that you can hardly see it. It just looks like the back of any vehicle. But when it's stationary, when it's in a command setup, you can extend this penthouse, you can extend it backwards, and it provides roughly the same amount of space as you've got in the vehicle itself. In addition to everything else I mentioned, the two men operating the rolling map and everything else, you've got four radio sets running from inside and the batteries to back them up. And that's another thing that makes the, the vehicle a bit outstanding. The Sultan is a distinctive vehicle when you see it. It used to be very distinctive. They used to have a thing called a Clark Mark, which was like a, a giant telescopic wireless aerial, oh, about 50 foot high, I think, at the front of the vehicle. And that gave, it was better for long range transmission. But nowadays, with the arrival of the latest generation of um, radio sets, you don't really need that big, powerful aerial anymore. It's been done away with. And the vehicle can rely on the, its ordinary radios and the aerials which stick out the roof. But otherwise, they look very similar. The same mechanics, the same technique for driving all the way through from between the two. Same stowage box. The only thing is, of course, Sultan will have a machine gun mounting by the commander's cupola. To, to look at, they're almost identical. You have a job telling them apart without the red crosses. And you couldn't think of anything more diametrically opposed to a, an ambulance than a command vehicle, but they, that's how they work.